Welcome back to the darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Welcome back to Detroit Ranch Works and DIY guys. Today's video, not really about bikes, not really about cars. One of my other favorite things, computers. I've been into them since I was a young kid in high school. Started building them out of scrap parts, literally. Kind of like what I do with bikes and some cars now too. But right here, this is the start of everything, including my entire YouTube channel. I've made over 70 videos on this. Actually, I think about 73 videos on this, which is quite a lot considering this is not even what it used to be. I've taken the guts from what I bought originally in 2015, which was a very small Alienware X51 R2. It's like a Dell made small desktop. It doesn't take up much space. It's supposed to be pretty good, but honestly, it's all I could get. I needed something at Intel i5. I knew I wanted to edit videos, so one of the big issues there is you wanna have good quality equipment. So what we had started out is in here, and we'll go ahead and open this up. This is the insides of the original Alienware. And you can see the motherboard in here is super tiny. Actually, majority of this on the motherboard is the CPU cooler, which when I bought this back in 2015, the first thing I did in the original Alienware case, CPU cooler with a bigger fan. Those tiny things run hot, and I was actually running a, a really low-end video card. I was overclocking, which made a ton of extra heat, so wanted to make sure we dispelled that very easily. Now, as I got into YouTube over the years, one of the biggest things that I did was in 2019, I built this, and what we have here is a Fanatex case with a tons of goodies and tons of other upgrades. And you can see here, this has like a nice little filtered system so you could clean out your vents and all of that. We have two big fans, and you can't see it right now, but these actually have red LEDs on them. If you like lights, it's kind of cool, you know. Uh, these were just actually very good fans, or Arctics. Some of the best you can get for the money. I actually uh, retrofitted the Wi-Fi up here. It's old Wi-Fi though, so I'm gonna be renewing this as well before I pass this computer on to its new owner. Snaps on no problem. But one of the biggest things too, this thing only takes 16 gigabytes of RAM. It is so old. The processor is a i5-440, 4440 I mean, I'm sorry. And this is a four core, 3.1 gigahertz, for what it was back in like 2013 when it was brand new, I got it, it was still a little old even. It was pretty pretty good stuff. Now what you can get today, uh, it struggles. It makes editing videos rough. Really, really rough. Uh, it's been quite discouraging sometimes over the channel trying to do big videos and the computer will just crash and I lost everything. So I have to start all over again. It's not a fun time at all. And uh, when you're especially learning to edit, that's a terrible way to learn. <laughs> it's having to do the same thing over and over. So. We did all the cool things like, you know, we did all the things to keep it cool on the top of this can, uh, on the top of this Fanatex case, there's also a magnetic screen and you have another exhaust fan up here on the top. We have one on the back side here, you can see, and there is no GPU in there. That is because I now have a new custom computer, which you probably have seen from the title screen. For our GPU, what I will be using is a GTX 1060. I actually, in 2019, when I first rebuilt this, that was one of the things that I had done, was get a nice video card because it really boosts the performance on this once I did get that. Unfortunately, they were a little expensive, even more so expensive now. The computers and because of COVID, the silicone market and all of this chipset material that they need is very, very expensive. So. If you're looking for a fancy gaming GPU or you want to get on a sim racer like I built over here, another one of my recent add-ons, you're going to need some good stuff, which honestly, I think I have the perfect baseline on my new build. So we'll be taking that out of there, putting it into this, and that pretty much will complete my build. On the back side of this case, there is another panel. This is pretty cool. For something a little older, you have two SSD drives for your smaller solid states. Now, what I did put in here is a very nice Corsair 750, pretty much the biggest wattage you would need for something like this. Almost a little overkill, to tell you the truth. 750 watts is a lot. I could probably get away with 500, but 
I wanted to make sure I built it up nice. And also at the time I was kind of thinking I was going to build onto this case. I ended up going a different direction and I think it's better. I think you'll agree. But that's pretty much it. You see, I tried to hide my wiring and all that. You tell this is very much so my first custom build. My new one looks much cleaner, but I still got a lot of love for this thing. It's taken me a long way on the channel. It's taught me how to edit and it still kicks it, man. I mean, it still does good. Uh, this actually what I have, if you have any sort of desktops or laptops with Wi-Fi issues, $20 for this TP-Link, plugs right into your USB, download the driver, five minutes you're up and running with brand new Wi-Fi. So this one is five gigahertz on the new Wi-Fi and one I have in here with the little mount I showed you, that's only gonna be 2.5. Actually, it, it gives me problems at some distances and stuff. The majority of the time I've had this, I've actually kept it plugged in with the LAN actually on here. <laughs> oh yeah, here's something I forgot to show. <laughs> you can see the white around this actual, this is the original, this black sticker piece is the original Alienware backing to the motherboard to stop dust from getting in. And uh, cause it didn't fit and I don't have a way to like adapt it into this new case. I like wrapped it up in tape and printer paper and built a adapter and it's worked great. <laughs> a little silly looking when you look at it from the back but that's been there since 2019 so. Can't complain. So that's a good look. Oh, don't want to lose my little thumb screws here to our glass piece. That's a good look to the whole little old setup, you know, a little tribute to our, our Alienware on steroids. Oh yeah, if you have a good setup, get you one of these. These are GPU braces, so it doesn't sag and, you know, have any issues with that. You definitely don't want that. These are like eight or nine bucks. So the GPU has been extracted from our new computer. And as I mentioned, Nothing too fancy, just a 1060. It is actually an OC, I almost forgot about that. You'd have the ability to overclock these. It is only three gigabytes RAM, which everybody said to get the six gigabyte, but if you're not doing anything super crazy, this is still, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm, I actually been using it on, on Ultra 1440p for gaming on my, my new rig and it's very fast. So it bumps this up to basically like 99% and it does it perfectly. It does not like overheat or anything. I'm not overclocking it, but when this thing is running at full capacity, it will do very well in HD games. You're not going to do like crazy Twitch level streaming or anything like that with this. If you wanted like ultra HD or something, you know, but this is still very good. Still probably get them for like 150 or something like that. You know, still pretty good deal for what they are. I bought this brand new for like 250 in 2019. So they were 300 MSRP when they came out. A good reliable unit and got a nice heat sink and all of that it's been a it's been a good little unit if for all my friends were insistent on getting the higher end stuff when i was looking to get a budget card and i've been very happy with this so let's put it back into its home and then we'll introduce you to the new setup <laughs> So we're back, as you can see, the old computer's all done. I have the old GPU, the GTX 1060 OC, back inside. Got a new power wire in there as well for our modular power supply I mentioned earlier. Also, it's hard to see, but you probably saw inside the case here a little white strip. Pretty cool, nothing fancy, but you know, give it a little pizzazz when you turn it on. I always like having little features like that on my builds. Also another thing that's neat is one of the buttons up here is how you can change it. And it's actually a Fanatex LED, so it's built in. You could just hit that, it'll flash through it or stay on one color, whatever you like. And uh, one last thing I did want to mention too, um, if you're getting a case, you do want to have on the bottom a screen where you can clean out all your dust, your dust filtrations and all of that. So that is the end of this case here. Now we're going to get it out of our way and move on to the good stuff. <laughs> 